On this video, I'll be sharing how I took an old salt shaker that was cracked and broken, a little boy that was cracked and broken, and made into a beautiful Halloween doll. I started, you can see how the head was not connected to the body. It had been broken off. I rebuilt the neck using fabric and a pipe cleaner. On this one, it's just showing how many places it was broken in. And then I show you how I connected a body to it using a tube that I created. Put polyester polyfill it, I mean um, poly pellets, and then more po uh, polyfill, and inserted the head into the body. Now I am beginning to make the clothing. I use Fabri-Tac because it works great on a variety of uh, fabrics and also on. Uh, a little bit of everything it works great I'm threading my needle and this is the dress or the skirt and I run a um, I thread my needle and I run a running stitch which is in and out in and out all the way across I just keep going in and out in and out and once I get totally to the other side, I just continue going. And the fabrics I'm using is cotton. And um, the thread is a very heavy duty thread. It's like a buttonhole or a hosiery thread. So it's very strong and it will hold very good. And I'm almost to the other side. Now I get the doll. I wrap it around the neck. And I insert the needle into the other side. And I pull it and allow it. Once it's pulled, then I distribute the gathers evenly. And I knot the thread by going in and then I leave a loop and I go through that loop and I do that twice and that way it is secure and then I cut my thread I always go in and knot it so when I get ready to use it again it's already knotted then I run a bead, a very small bead of fabric tack glue down the back. I mean, I could sew this, but it was easier just to use the glue. And this glue is uh, machine washable, even though you would never be washing something like this. I press it down, make sure it is even, and press very securely. Now I'm just kind of checking the um, gathers. Then the next thing I gather, using this polka dot fabric, I'm making like a ruffled collar. So basically I will be doing the exact same thing I've done at the top of the dress. I run an in and out, in and out, running stitch. And I go all the way down and this is an actual real time, so you can see, um, basically, you can make this whole thing in less than an hour. And I just continue. I'm using the strong thread again. And I don't worry, but always making sure my thread match because it all works out just fine. And it kind of, this thread is like an off-white, but it kind of blends in with most of the um, fabrics that I use. I'm just showing the stitching. And you don't have to be perfect. They don't all have to be exactly matching, you know, perfect size, one-eighth of an inch stitch or anything. And then I'm pulling it to gather up that collar. Then I kind of see if it about fits around the neck. 
and then I will knot that by doing the exact same thing, making it, when I get to a loop at the end, I will loop it through, pull it tight, and then I set that aside. Then, now I'm starting on the head. I've already uh, sandwiched two pieces of black fabric together using one to under, which I had already did that step with my iron. And I fold it into quarters. I have to switch scissors. And now I'm cutting it into a half circle. I open up my circle, kind of check it. I see it's not perfectly round, which is okay, but I do cut off like any little pieces. That's very obvious. And now my circle is much better, a neater circle. I fold it back in half. And now I fold it in half again to make quarters. And I cut another little circle out. And that's what's going to fit down on top of the head. I'm trying that and I see it needs to be a little bigger. So this time I'm chancing that I know what I'm doing. And I'm cutting the circle a little bit bigger. I want it to fit securely on the head. Okay, that looks good to me. Now I take, I've, this is it's just a piece of black fabric, and I have cut a piece of cardstock, a heavy duty cardstock, in like a kind of like a semicircle, well, like a pie slice, a wide pie slice. I'm putting my fabric tack glue all over that. I make it nice and even. Once I think I have most of it on, I take my black fabric and I lay it right on top of that. Okay. Now I'm taking my hand and I'm smoothing it out, making sure I have a good bond between my paper and my fabric. Just trimming it a little neater. And now I kind of fold it around, roll it around to make a, I know I'm out of frame, but I'm making like a cone basically. I put my glue along one edge of that um, pie slice, for lack of a better term. And that glue today was, oh, it was so thick, it just did not want to come out. I had to really squeeze hard. Now I fold that around. I just got glue on my finger, but, and then I kind of like continue kind of maneuvering it a little bit. Squeezing it, pressing tight to make sure it's a good contact. Usually I would take like a clothespin or something like that to hold it together. This glue does work pretty, uh, hold pretty fast. And a lot of times I'll use um, a hot glue gun, but um, a hot glue gun kind of, mm, the glue sometimes can be a little thicker or something. And so I like to use fabric glue whenever I'm using a fabric. Okay, so now what I'm doing is putting glue all the way around the inside brim of the hat. Right along that edge carefully. And once I get that all the way around, I am going to set that right on top of the brim, matching those two circles. And there is a witch's hat. I don't worry with that glue showing a little because I will be trimming it with some ribbon. Now these are two pipe cleaners that has been cut in half and I kind of twist them together, together to give it a little bit more um, stability or make them a little bit stronger. 
So those are the two arms. Now I take a piece of the black fabric, put a little glue on the tip just to hold that in place when I begin to wrap the arm. I'm just twisting and wrapping. And I kind of do turn on a little tiny bit of a faux edge so that way that raw edge of the fabric is not showing. It's really not that uh, crucial you do that because some people, especially if you want to give it a more rustic look, to have that little raveled edge would be, you know, a nice effect. Once I get to the top, I cut off any excess. Put a little dab of glue on it and wrap it tight. And that'll kind of seal that, um, the top of the fabric. And you don't have to worry with the raw edge because that will be sewn to the body at the top, which you will see uh, very shortly. And then I go and I do the second arm, I repeat. I decided, okay, I'm gonna make my hole a little bit bigger on my glue and see if that helped. It didn't, but you know, hey, it is what it is, so you just keep on going. And you notice how I fold that under first and then fold around. And once I get that all the way up to the top, I mean, it's a very uh, quick process. It doesn't take long a long time to do. And I just continue wrapping. And then again, I cut it off once I get to the very top. Put a little glue to hold it in place. Okay, now I have that all twisted tight. It wants to come loose, so I had to go back and add just another dab of glue or so. Okay, so now that other one had came loose a little as well, but I just put a little more glue and twist it back in shape, in place. And now I decide to, um, I position where I want my arms to be. First I give it a dry run, say, oh yeah, that's maybe the right place. Uh, yeah, that looks good. Okay, then I put a little glue under each one exactly where I want them to be held in place. And even though I use glue to hold it in place, I do also go back and secure it with a needle and thread. Just making sure all the little um, gathers around the neck is kind of distributed evenly. sure I have it the right way. So now he has his little arms. And the arms could have been made out of a uh, like a flesh uh, skin tone. But on all of these, since it's Halloween, I was using black. It just made life easier for me. So now I'm ready to take that collar again. But then I said, oops, I remembered. I didn't stitch my arms on. So I thread my needle and stitch all of my arms back on securely. So I'm just making sure my arms are on tight. Okay, 
so now that that's open securely I go on all the way around to the center back when I end up I take my needle in and out till I get to the center back and the reason I want to be at the center back is because when I put my collar on I want to have a place that will be that where the uh, where I tie it off could be secure and also would be less noticeable than in the very front. So I put my collar on. I had put just a dot of glue to kind of hold that in place in the front. Pull it to the back. And again, I use a little bit of glue. Because even though it's nothing that's going to be handled a lot, I do like to make sure that, um, you know, it is very well made. And you don't pick it up and it just fall apart or anything like that. I tell you, I had to use both hands for that glue today. It was so tight out. It was so thick which is unusual because it was a new bottle of glue. So I know it's one I better use quickly because otherwise I won't be able to use it by the time I get to the end. So again, I'm going to knot that, going through the loop. And what I did on that was to wrap it around the neck, right in the seam, right over the stitch line and pull tight and that will make that really gather up nice on right around that neck and then i'm going to knot again okay so now the next step i make sure i I always like to knot a few times and actually what I'm doing is going back around that a second time and then I have my ribbon and I'm going to tie a little bow everybody tie bows a little differently I kind of just go for it getting the bow nice and even and it kind of like went wopsided on one side, kind of turned inside out. So I used my needle to kind of uh, straighten my uh, ribbon back out. And now I will cut, to, cut it to make the uh, two, the ends even. And tie that on using my needle. It's almost there. Okay. And then I'm back to the center back, and that's where I was knotting everything off in the center back. This supposed to secure. I like doing it twice. Probably once would be sufficient, but... Okay, so now he's almost finished. I had dropped my needle on the floor and I'd be walking around barefooted so I had to get the needle out the floor. Okay, and these little pumpkins just came from the Dollar Tree. They're like a velvety pumpkin. They're really pretty. And I position it in his hand. And I put a little dot of glue on the pumpkin in two places. And then make sure the ribbon is not caught up under the glue. And then I like to put a little bit of glue up under the pumpkin as well.
and I hold it in place just a moment but it you know this glue works fantastic it's not that cheap well I mean it's a good price but to me um, I bought the large one this time because I had to run to Walmart to get it but um, it's like it's cheaper at Walmart because that big size is actually only $9.99 which is pretty good because at Joann's and places it's about I think that size is like $13 or $14 now and now I'm putting some uh, glue right around the base between the brim and the cone part of the witch's hat because I'm going to use that same little black check ribbon as the band on the hat. And I started right at the back by the seam. And I go around, I'm just kind of pressing it in place. And where the two pieces of ribbon come together, that's where I will use my scissor to cut that a little cut it apart and put a little bit of glue on that little right at the end and that way it holds it securely and now I'm ready to put it on his head or her head its head. I don't know what it is. And I put glue all the way around, right above where I wanted to actually stop because that way when I put it on the head, put the head on the head, that glue will kind of like smear down to, uh, right to that line where I wanted to stop. I make sure where I bring the two pieces together is in the center back of the head. And you can kind of style that head any way you want it, to the side, uh, straight up. So I'm pretty happy with that. But my daughters always say I'm a little extra sometimes. So I said, hmm. So this is showing the finished project, and I don't know why it's skipping and moving so fast, but I hope you enjoyed this, this little video. Thanks. Bye-bye.